Get him. There we go. Ooh, not a bad one. Not a big one either, but hey, finally got my first fish of the day. On the Thunder Cricket, I made one switch of colors and uh, got a bite. Bring it in, buddy. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Yes, sir. That's a good, healthy fish. Heck yeah. First fish of the day for me. And welcome back, everybody, to Tyler's Real Fishing. Today's episode is one that I'm very excited about because we're going to be talking about a topic that I don't think is covered very often on YouTube channels, and that is the topic of finding cover when you couldn't see it before. Now, that statement might not have made any sense to you, but it will in this video. So, let's talk about it. Now hopefully the intro, title, thumbnail don't have you guys all too confused, but this definitely is one of the more confusingly worded videos I have made, and that is because it is an interesting topic that not many people think about in the bass fishing world, and that is how to find cover and structure to catch bass on that you didn't know was there. First off, we're going to start here on the lake with, of course, the stuff that you see in the water. And the special situation we have today is that Lake LBJ, this lake here in Austin, is on a drawdown period. So you guys can see probably from the bank here, it is four to five feet lower than average. Now, a lot of lakes around the country are, are you know, stable level lakes, which means the water never fluctuates. And then a whole bunch around Texas are variable level lakes, which means that the water level, you know, goes up and down with the amount of rain and droughts that you have. And so what's so special about this lake is that it's an amazing bass fishery, especially when the water gets down. Now, of course, we're gonna catch some fish in today's video. We're gonna show you guys some big bass, but the point of it is to show you guys that you have to take advantage of what the lake is showing you when it is down. And that's the first tip I'm gonna give you guys, is that when you are in a lake, I don't care if it's a, a highland lake like this, I don't care if it's a Florida lake, there's gonna be times when your local lake is drawn down for some reason, maybe it's drought, maybe people have to fix their docks. Uh, like here, we had a horrible flood, which caused a lot of dock and shoreline damage so they had to lower down the water level so in some way shape or form you guys are going to have an opportunity when your lakes are drawn down at some point uh, to check out what was there that you couldn't see before and that is what i'm doing today today i'm driving around using my angler button here the bullseye to mark a whole lot of cool structure that i see that way when i fish the lake again you know when the lake is at full pool I know exactly what type of cover is down there that I didn't know existed. So we're going to work our way up here. I just caught a fish back there on that rock that I know was there, but I didn't know there was a drop off. And so now the water level is down, I'm able to, to see exactly uh, what these fish are sitting on when I'm catching them. And it also allows me to look around and see like, dang, I've, oop, oop. Oh, there's a fish. Oh gosh. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that folks. Woo. <laughs> Power pull down. <laughs> just like that boom there's probably a little rock sitting off that bank there i didn't see and there we go there's another fish on the thunder cricket i love it okay i don't know where i was i was talking about drawdowns or something so like i was saying drawdowns just pre present an awesome opportunity for you guys to see uh, what was down there and i know that not all the time when lakes are drawn down can you actually get a boat on the water luckily this lake has a few deep ramps that uh make access to the lake harder for sure but uh definitely accessible and and when you get out here man it is uh, it can be fun that's uh, as you can see right there is two fish in a in a 20 yard stretch i guarantee you there's more fish in this area so i'm going to pick it apart a little bit more and when you're fishing a lake in a situation like this it doesn't have to be four or five foot drawn down it could be one foot it could be you know a, a drought you're having like on my home lake of lake travis it goes up and down 40 feet uh you just have to be attentive i fished out here twice last year during the drawdown uh, when the lake was this low and i didn't drive around and mark and look for the places that could help me catch fish when the lake is up and i definitely made that mistake last year so this year that's why i'm doing this today and tomorrow and i'm trying to let you guys know uh about this tactic for you know, pre-fishing, you could call it as well. Because that's really what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm getting my mind uh, to understand more of what this lake is like because I fished Lake LBJ, this lake here, for so many years without really knowing 
kind of what was down there. I would just go skip docks and wouldn't really care what the cover was like underneath the dock. But now that I'm looking around at so many docks that I skipped over the years, and I mean, granted, I caught some fish on them, but there are so many docks that I skipped out on that have such better sticks underneath, rocks underneath. Uh, I mean, most of these docks are just a clay bottom. And so it's cool to be able to look and see which docks are actually going to be most productive in the future. And that will definitely help me catch more fish as I fish this lake when the water level is stable. And man, this right here is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I'm gonna turn the camera here and kind of zoom in for you guys on exactly what I'm looking at. But you can see here we have a, um, just kind of a, a sandy you know, bank right here with a retaining wall. And the water is usually all the way up to the retaining wall. So it's about four feet low, maybe five feet low. And without the water being low, and without graphing this, you would have no clue that a line of rocks and you know, riprap bank starts right here, four feet under the water, where as of right here, it's just sand. And so I guarantee you there's gonna be fish here, whether in the drawdown or at the you know, normal time of the year, and that's definitely where fish are going to stack up that you would have no clue was there unless the water was down and you were being observant. So now knowing this is here, I'm gonna fish this a little bit and I'm going to double tap on my angler bullseye. I'm gonna open up my phone, I just felt it buzz. And what that did is I was on my trip here, find exactly where I'm at, find this bullseye right here. I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna take a photo of the exact area. I'm gonna take a sideways photo. And later on, on the web app, I'm actually gonna change this to be not a, a bullseye, but a rock pile. I'm not gonna do that right now for the sake of time. Rock retaining wall, boom. And just like that, we have a waypoint marked and uh, we know exactly what is here. So I kind of drifted over this area already. Let me make a few casts back to this. And this is like the ideal type of stuff for Lake LBJ. Like fish here love rock. They love to get in and around rock and uh, cause there's not, there's not a whole lot of it. You know, there's a few stretches of, of riprap around docks around the lake, but nothing like this that you would have no clue was there if the water wasn't down. Got him, ha ha ha. I knew it, I knew it. Didn't have to tell me twice. Get on up in here, boy. Not a big one, but you know what? Prove my hypothesis that fish are gonna sit here on the drawdown, and I guarantee it when the lake is up, they're gonna sit here. Heck yeah. That guy's too small to keep in a well today. Got him. Man, they are loaded right here. They are loaded right here. They are loaded. Bring it up in here. Yes, sir, let's go. That one's a little bigger. I'm gonna power pull down. Ooh. That's a fat, healthy fish. That's a good three pounder. Heck yes. Let's go. We found him. We found him. Let's keep this train rolling. They're right here. No, not a fish. A rock. I got excited. I'm getting excited. Another rock. Got him. Got him. Let's go. Let's go. Power poles are going down and he's coming in. Yes, sir. This is exciting, folks. These are the days that I like. And look at that healthy fish. Man. Oh, Thunder Cricket fell right out. That's beautiful. That's a gorgeous fish. In case you're curious, I'm not keeping these fish all day. I'm just putting them in the live well to test my new coal tags. This is awesome. There are fish galore in this area. Tons of fish. This gets me excited. I love spring bass fishing. And after I finish whaling on this school of fish, catching a few more for you guys, I'm gonna explain to you guys the second way that you can find cover and structure you didn't know was there before when you are not on the water. There he is. All right, got him. I think he's big. I think he's big. Give him another hook set? No, he's not. <laughs> he's just swimming at me with an open mouth. I knew they'd be here. We are finding the pattern, boys and girls, and that's a healthy fish. I mean, like, just so thick, juicy, meaty. And we're gonna go with a, a ding, and see you later. And just like that, all the data is marked from that catch, from weather data, location data. 
and not only that, but also the bait, the rod, the reel, and the line that I caught that fish on. Let's get us another one. There he is. Let's go. Let's go. Hey. Hey, yo. Right on the corner of that thing. Whee! Oh. Adios. No, nope, that didn't work. Adios, amigo. Ding. I like Mark and Data with my bullseye. Uh. Well, now that we've done quite a bit of fishing, it is time for us to talk about the second way to find spots that you didn't know were there. And that is usually the point that I'm gonna jump back to the house, get on the computer, show you guys how to use Google Earth. But I feel like you guys already know how to do that. And for the sake of saving time, we're not gonna go super deep into this, but the second way, besides actually getting on the lake yourself, which is definitely uh, the most preferred way, but you can, let's say you're pre-fishing for a tournament, you can go on Google Earth and download the actual Google Earth program to your computer, and then you can go on the history mode to see pictures of when the lake was last drawn down and when it last had a drought, and I've used that countless times, not only to find fish in tournaments, but to find fish for myself for fun and also to make some angler uh, waypoint packs online. And so that is all that I have for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Team TRF. I'll be out here tomorrow to film some more awesome videos for you guys, and uh, I'm just pumped. 2020 is going to be a good year. I'm in my Skeeter FXR 2020. Uh, we're hopefully going to catch 20, 20 pounders, and uh, we'll see y'all next time. joking me. I'm literally just swimming a jig in the middle of nowhere. I tried to hit those ducks and I legit caught a fish. <laughs> I am getting so hot I'm gonna take my clothes off.